Hey drummers, hope you well. Just a quick one and shout out to Superstar channel member Alan who came in for his face-to-face -face session yesterday and he was asking about uh, getting your left foot working. This is something that drummers ask about all the time and uh, specifically in the context of playing grooves. So what we're doing here is we're playing basic sort of rock, pop, R&B type of grooves and we're rather than playing on the hi-hat with the stick like we do when we you know start playing the drums. We've taken it over to the ride. Or you might be playing on the floor, Tom, you know. Or you might be on a closed hi-hat or a stack or whatever else, you know, with crash cymbal, maybe. But the point is we're not hitting our like regular hi-hat like we would when we're playing a hi-hat bass groove. We're taking it over to the other side of the kit or taking it somewhere else and we're getting our left foot working here. And all I'm gonna do is present here what I think are like the big three, I'll do one extra one as well, but definitely the big three like hi-hat patterns. And my best advice here, or what I'd love to do anyway, and what I've done over the years, just to get that left foot working. I should say as well, what this does, I think is it just, it can, in the right place, just bring a groove to life like crazy. Here, I'm just gonna play it as a hi-hat. Often drummers, and I do this sometimes, will attach like a tambourine to the hi-hat or, you know, people put crazy stuff on their hi-hat and they make an extra noise, jingle ring, all that kind of cool stuff that you can put on the on the hi-hat, which can really enhance it. But what it does, it gives you like a sort of stereo effect. You know, you've got your kick and your snare and your ride cymbal in this case here, doing their thing. But you, then you've got that beautiful left foot or right foot, whatever, hi-hat foot, playing a pattern along with it and has that beautiful stereo effect and it can sound absolutely brilliant. So I would say when you're playing a basic, you know, straight ahead groove like this, the big three, are playing two and four, as in like playing at the same time as you hit the snare drum with your left foot. Uh, all four quarter notes, as in one, two, three, four. And then eighth notes, playing all the eighth notes, typically sort of bouncing along on the ball of your foot, one and two and three and four. And there are also offbeat eighth notes, so I think that could be a really good look. And there are loads of others as well, but we'll deal with those first three first. So let's just play a basic beat. And all we're going to do on the first one is uh, close the hi-hat with our foot, chick, on two and four, right? An age-old classic, right from the jazz days, right from since drummers have played, even before the hi-hat was a thing, you had the, the low boy, didn't you, or the sock, which drummers just did the chick sound with. Even from those days, hi-hat or low hat, low boy, on two and four is, is an age-old classic. So... Yeah, and that's just hitting on two and four with the snare drum in this case. You can play it potentially with your heel up, like bouncing on the ball of your foot. Can you see this from here? If I do a bit of that, can you see? Like one, two, three, on two and four, one, two, three, four. Or you could play it heel down, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. They both work, don't they? Depending on the, the feel and the vibe and what feels good to you, they can both work. But that's the first one, two and four. One thing I really like to do is go into a fill. You get what's happening there. So I, I, I personally really like the vibe of going into a fill and out of it again and keeping that going magic and just gives that sense of continuity. Perhaps, I don't know, maybe a bit more of a smooth, pro type of sound possibly if it's played well uh that it just has that kind of sense of musical flow and the whole thing just gelling a little bit one two three four one two three four one two i'm gonna play a drum fill one just kind of grooves it all together a bit and I, something I'm a huge fan of honestly is like when you go to a drum fill something I try and keep in mind as I play anyway just from my own perspective is when you go to a drum fill it's still got a groove right I hate the idea of it being a groove that people are digging and then when the fill comes in everything sort of stops and then the groove resu the groove resumes I love the idea not the groove you're not playing at a wedding but the I love the idea of the the groove and the fill both if someone's nodding their head or tapping their foot they you know they're doing it all the way through grooves and fills. So that's the first one on the two and the four. The next one is all four quarter notes. So one, two, 
three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, here comes a fill. One, two, three, four. Uh, the last one would be eighth notes. I would say most often here, I mean, you might be able to do it heel down. I find myself on the two and the four and the quarter notes, versions one and two, I find myself playing a mixture of heel down and heel up, depending on the vibe and the room I'm in and other factors like that. But with eighth notes, pretty much, unless it's unbelievably slow, and I can't imagine ever doing this, but it's like, you know, it's possible. Uh, unless it's unbelievably slow, I would play this as a heel up, bouncing on the ball of the foot, but like a bit like you would on a bass drum if you were playing. Like kind of hopping on the ball of your foot, you know. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And three. Can you see this? So one and, get my leg out of the way. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So I just think of this as a nice loose leg. Hanging down, the great um, Benny Greb, he talks about dead meat, doesn't he? When your foot lands, dead meat, that lovely kind of relaxed falling of the foot onto the pedal. But then in this case, hopping off again straight away. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so. Uh, one thing we were talking about with Alan actually yesterday was uh, what that opens up is the possibility to move over with your left stick to the uh, the hi hat, and if you're playing on you know an upbeat sixteenth, an E or an R, if you're into that sort of counting, uh, you're going to get that psh, like a hi hat burst or bark type of sound. which can be a lot of fun. Now, they all of these, like I say, pretty much every video, it kind of depends, doesn't it, where you're at with your drumming, how long you've been playing, all that sort of stuff. I remember getting into, in particular, playing all the eighth notes with your left foot and finding it really tricky, honestly, at first, finding it hard in the first case. In my experience, I can only speak ever from my own experience, it, like it was um, it was a, a slow build. And what I did was I did, did it in stages. So I played, uh, I think I said this in another video about this once, actually. I used to love playing along to Stone Roses, Second Coming, I had that album, and um, especially Side 2, I'm not sure why it was Side 2, but I used to practice this along to Side 2 a lot, and but I, that's a huge point, by the way, I mean, I personally, again, just love doing this along to music, this is the perfect sort of practice to just put on music that you like, as long as it has the right sort of feel, and just jam these along, you know, rather than, well, as well as using a metronome, if you've got some music that you know it feels good, and you'll enjoy playing to, and it's a solid tempo, brilliant, just use that as your metronome, that's how I see it. So one and two and three and four. And now I remember building up in stages. I find that really useful. I think most likely I'd do hi-hat on its own first. Two and three. And then I'd add the ride. Three and four and one and two. Then I'd probably add the snare two and four. Three and four and one and two. And then the kick, right? And in the first case, it'd just be a basic kick part. And then after a while, you start to elaborate and play the, the normal sort of kicks you play. And the, and the sort of snare variations that you would normally play. But if, if you're at the beginning with this, I mean, obviously, you've got to go slow and, and work it up. There's no entitlement to just play this out of nowhere. I remember spending a, quite a lot of time, weeks, months, building this, that eighth note one up in particular. So uh, the order I would probably go in is left foot first, then add the ride, then add the snare, then add the kick. So let's recap. The, the first example, number one, was on two and four. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. On one, two, three, four. All the quarter notes, and all the eighth notes, I would think 
of those as the big three, like left foot or high hat foot patterns. Uh, just for fun, I'll throw in one more offbeat eighth notes on the and. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Can be a really nice one. Again, if you possibly can, keep it going in the fills. on the ands again. Build it up slow. If you're in doubt, do it in that order. Hi-hat, one and two and three and add the ride. One and two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and one. Two and three and four. Add the snare. And then add your kick and one and two. That can sound really good in the right place. Uh, on as usual on the channel members page, I'll put notation for each of these with a along with the basic rock groove uh, and a practice along version for you, so you can have a little uh, look at that notation and stick the practice along and groove along. Um, if you find that useful, that'll be over on the channel members page. And I'll link to that below. Shout out to Alan and just have some fun with it, man. This is what I do anyway. What I have done is put on music that I love. Groove along, don't lose any sleep if some of them are quote unquote, you know, difficult or you're struggling with them like people say at first, just take your time, build it up and uh, you'll be in business, man. Thanks for watching as always. On the V drums, when playing heel up, I noticed it just then actually, uh, sometimes people comment on the fact that it makes a bit of a noise when the hi-hat comes up. Psh. Well, it does on my V hi-hat anyway. Uh, I find that in real life, not in real life, what am I saying? I don't know, not real life, this is real life, here I am, this is real life. On the uh, on acoustic kit is what I mean, <laughs> in real life. On the acoustic kit is what I mean, uh, the open, I think that it doesn't matter, it doesn't make a big difference. Um, if you were worried about that, you might think about being sensitive as you lift your foot up, perhaps not just going wildly up so the cymbals sort of, you know, quickly bang open, you might just do it in a subtle manner. I actually quite like the sound, so here. I don't really lose any sleep over that because I quite like the sound of them opening up. Uh, that's cool. But if that bothers you, obviously think about maybe lifting up the hi-hat quite subtly so you don't get that sound. Uh, I'd say it happens more on just on my own V-drum kit. I hear that noise more here than I do uh, on an acoustic kit. But if that bothers you, just think about moving your leg up subtly. Otherwise, go nuts. They are the big four. Like I say, check out the uh, notation on the channel members page for all four of those and uh, practice along version. Have fun. Shout out to Alan. See you soon. Thanks so much.